हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी डू हिट द सब्सक्राइब बटन इफ़ यू आर हेयर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम विच सीज दैट ड्यूरिंग द टेंशन टेस्ट द वुडन स्पेसिमन इज सब्जेक्टेड टू एन एवरेज नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस ऑफ टू के एस आई डिटर्मिन द एक्जियल फोर्स पी अप्लाइड टू द स्पेसिमन ऑल्सो फाइंड द एवरेज शेयर स्ट्रेस डिवेलप एलॉन्ग सेक्शन ए ए ऑफ द स्पेसिमन सो हेयर दिस इज द सेक्शन ए ए and if we look from this side then we will have the front view of the specimen like this and section a is somewhere here so first of all uh, we are given the average normal stress right so we can say that the average normal stress is equal to 2 ksi and this is subjected to the specimen right so somewhere here we will have this average stress which will be applied on the exposed area here so so this average stress will be equal to the normal force let's say n divided by the area of the specimen so the area of the specimen will be, will be somewhere here like this and we can say that the area will be if we cut this specimen here then the cross section area will look like this and this side of the cross section is 1 inch and this side is 2 inch right you guys can see so the area will be 1 times 2 right 1 inch times 2 inch so this is inch square and here we will have the average normal stress is given it is 2 ksi so 2 ksi means uh, 2 into 10 raised to the power 3 pound per inch square so from this we can find the normal force this will be 2 times 10 raised to the power 3 pound per inch square multiply by 1 into 2 is 2 inch square so 2 inch square if you multiply both side with this then we will have the normal force like this inch square will cancel out and we will be left with 2 into 10 raised to power 3 multiply by 2 so this is 4 into 10 raised to power 3 pounds or we can say 4 kips so now if we consider since we want to find this force p so for that we have to consider the forces and we have to consider the free body diagram so let's say initially i consider this upper part of the mechanism so we will have that force p here so let's say this is that force p which is acting vertically upward this is given in the problem and as you guys can see that these two legs will apply the force on the specimen in the upward direction like this right so here we will have these legs will apply the force on the specimen in the upward direction and as a reaction the specimen will apply the force in the downward direction so let's say that these two forces are let's say these two forces are f right so f and f so these two same f forces will be acting vertically upward here as well on the specimen so this is the same force which is applied on the specimen and as a reaction the specimen will apply the same force f in the downward direction on these two legs of this upper body of the mechanism and similarly uh, if we consider the downward part this down part then you guys can see that again these two legs will apply the force on the specimen in the downward direction because the specimen is in tension and and as a reaction what will happen is that the specimen will apply the force on the legs in the upward direction so this means that again here we will have the f forces as well we will have that same f forces here as well so now if you want to find this f in terms of p then we must apply the sum of the forces in the y direction for this free body diagram so if i apply the sum of the forces in the y direction for the upper part of the mechanism upward direction is considered to be positive then we have plus p and minus 2f this is equal to 0 and we can say that minus 2f is equal to minus p and f is equal to p divided by 2 so this means that uh, if force p is applied then we will have um half of that p force uh, will be acting on each side of the specimen like this so f is equal to p divided by 2 now since we are given the average normal stress so again we have to pass a cutting section here let's say i pass a cutting section here and then we consider this part right let's say this is now my free body diagram so here 
here we will have that normal force. So the normal force is going to act. Let's say this is our normal force. So then this normal force is, is we know that this normal force is 4 kips. We have determined that from the given stress, right? So this is 4 kip. Now if we apply the sum of the forces in the y direction for the specimen for this diagram, in the upward direction is considered to be positive, then we have 2f, a 2f plus 2f minus n, this is equal to 0, and from this we can say that f is equal to n divided by 2. So n divided by 2 is basically 4 divided by 2, and f is equal to 2 kip. So now if, if this f is equal to 2 kips, then we can find that force p. So force p is equal to 2 times f, right? So from this from this diagram, we can from this uh, equation, we can say that p is equal to 2f, or we can say that p is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4 kip. So this means that if you want to have the average, if the average normal stress in the cross section of the specimen is 2 ksi, then 4 kip force must be applied. Similarly, again, we are also asked to find the average shear stress developed in section AA. So here we have that section AA, and then for section AA, again, we, we have to pass a cutting section for for the specimen here, right? Then, so then if I pass a cutting section here, then this will be our free body diagram. You guys can see this will be my free body diagram. And then here... Here we will have the shear force, right? So if the force is going to act, uh, apply in the upward direction, then the shear force is going to be in the downward direction. So let's say this is my shear force now. VAA, let's say. So then if we consider this free body diagram again, if we apply the sum of the forces in the Y, this must be equals to zero. Upward direction is considered to be positive. So now we have plus F minus VAA and this is equal to 0 and from this we can say that minus VAA is equal to minus F and if you multiply both sides with minus sign we will have VAA equals to F or we can say that the shear force will be equal to F which is 2 kip and similarly if you want to find the shear stress the average shear stress on the cross section so we can say that the average shear stress is equal to VAA divided by the area of that section AA now, as you guys can see that the thickness of the specimen is, this is 2 inch, right? So, you guys can see that this will be the area. <clears throat> so, then this is 4 inch. Let, let me draw it in 3D. So, then this will be the area, right? And this height is 4 inch, this is 4 inch, and this is the thickness, which is 2 inch. So, the area is 4 into 2, right? So, we will write that VAA is 2 kip, and this is 4 inch into 2, and this is inch square. So, we can say 2 will cancel out, so this is 1 divided by 4, and 1 divided by 4 is 0 0.25. So, we can say that this average shear stress in section AA is 0 0.25 KSI or we can say that if we remove this K so we can say that this is 0 0.25 into 10 raised to power 3 PSI and we can say that 0 0.25 multiplied by 10 raised to power 3 this is equal to 250 PSI so this is the average shear stress in that section AA. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibler.